Man, ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all. Hope you guys have been having a great day. We still have um, some more Shonda Van Der Art calls to listen to. We still have some more Paul Ferguson calls to listen to. The live stream yesterday was fire. You guys were awesome. Shout out all the members. We're like 431 members strong. That is insane. 400, you, man, you got, yeah, you guys are lit. But anyways, shout out to the live gang who joined in yesterday. We still have some more calls, but I needed to take a detour because during that live, I had asked the question. I was like, you know, it would be funny if Shonda had a YouTube that we could go and visit. It's Law Clerk through Service Dog's Eyes. I need the Shonda YouTube, though. Shonda's channel is from the POV of her service dog. It's painful. Okay, okay, hold on. Pause the video. Where are we in the video? The video's almost done. Pause the video. What, what's, her, what's her YouTube name? I need to find it. I see it. Ah! 500 subscribers. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. We, oh, my. Okay. Yep. More content to come. Boy, when I tell you Shonda Vander Ark has a YouTube. Shit blew my mind blew my mind so anyways people we're gonna go ahead and check this out this is um this is shonda in the wild this is shonda you know doing doing the things that she would do in the day-to-day -day. and um we get to kind of just take a view we get we get to take a look at how she ran shit it's crazy but anyways people i love you guys get the things you guys need let's go ahead and jump into this thing Okay, so hopefully the lighting's okay. We're gonna try to get at least some of this video done. I have some other stuff. I just finished my one class tonight and I have some other stuff to do, but I really wanted to do this video. Um, now, as we go throughout this video, let us, <clears throat> let us act like we're in class and take some notes. The behavior similarities, Jesus, that pause. Look at the face, jeez. Anyways, the behavior similarities between Paul and Shonda. Now, keep in mind, Shonda's not an idiot per se. You know, she's a smarter person. You know, the bar exam is not that easy. I've heard. I haven't tried it. But let, let's keep it. Let's see if he emulates any, any, drop it down in the comments. And let's see if he emulates any mannerisms from Shonda. Because, man, I have a feeling this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. And she does that fast talking thing to where she's going really quick. And she's going to tell you exactly, frankly, what's going on. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of that. Get ready for the, the anxiety speech, but let's do this thing. Main purpose being, and I'm not going to call out. I mean, there's some fakes out there I really would love to call out, but I'm just, I'm going to let other people that have already done that do that. Um, but I wanted to address something. And one of the reasons I'm not mentioning any names is because um, the, the main person I've seen on several videos recently that is kind of the main focus, although it might take me a few minutes to get there of this video, um, is, you know, they're, they're a strong service dog advocate. I don't ever want to discourage that. One thing I want to make sure is that we're getting correct information out. Oh, yeah. She has a YouTube about her dogs and about caring and loving and, and you know, looking after her dogs, you know? about how to take how to properly take care of a dog. She should have had a channel that said how to properly take care of a fucking child. A 15-year-old that is. Not even a baby, a 15-year-old. You know feed them. That that's number 1. Give them water, number 2. Maybe throw some education his way, 3. You know, that's pretty much it. Tell him you love him. Maybe, you know. But no, no, no. Starving him. That that was it. That was there there we go. That was the one. That was the one. Um, but I don't, like I said, I don't ever want to discourage the advocacy, service animal advocacy, because it is important. Um, so just a little bit of information. Hopefully this doesn't bore you, but it's kind of sets the stage for some of the, the stuff that I'll, I'll uh, go into later. Um, so one of the, okay, I'm trying to decide like I had in my head how I was going to, what order I was going to do this in. Um, but, and yeah, of course now. And you know I'm not going to edit it. Hey, yo, her YouTube sucks, dog. Did it because I don't have time. 
I'm already probably gonna have to break this up because I'm gonna do a few minutes and then I gotta go teach my little guy and then probably come back. So we'll see. Um, but um, we'll just do explanation. Like I said, hopefully it just doesn't bore you to begin with. So something that people may or may not realize, especially as far as like federal versus state laws, things like that, just basic information. We're, this is, we're supposed to be a uh, federalism system. The federal government's not supposed to have as much power as the state government. I just want to point out that she hasn't even started her topic yet. It's a minute and 44. I guess she kind of started the, the precursor to her topic, but damn lady, we heard you ramble for a minute and 30 seconds talking about nothingness. The, yeah, I bet you Timothy is somewhere in the house hungry while she's making this damn video. And Paul Ferguson, he's in the fucking corner making Minecraft videos like a complete weirdo. Um, federal government's supposed to be limited. I'm not going into where we are there nowadays, but that'll make more sense in a minute. Um, obviously, you have the Constitution, but as far as federal laws go, when Congress passes the laws, um, most of those, pretty much all of them, I would have to check. I just, I don't want to say all. When you get into law school, you almost never use all or never. So you get out of that habit. And so yeah. when you get into law school, you, you almost never say all or never, you know, because I'm smart and, you know, I got into law school. So you, you just never say that. So uh, for my vocabulary, I usually always say, oh, I just said always. You never say all or man. Oh, my God. She's such a pretentious piece of shit. If you guys know Brian, the character from Family Guy, she's very much a Brian, a pretentious, thinks she knows everything piece of shit. Yeah, you get a little careful about using absolutes. Um, but at least most of anything's passed by Congress goes into the United States Code, the USC. And what happens is obviously federal law, but a lot of the US Code, including the Americans with Disabilities Act, it's written and it's written this way on purpose. It's written more vague, more general and broad. And that way, first of all, it's easier to get passed through, you know, especially nowadays with the way things are with the uh, laws getting passed. Um, but that also allows, since there are other methods that I'll explain in a minute, it, it allows definitions to change, you know, regulations to change, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, like the Air Carrier Access Act regulations that just got updated, but I'll stay off, try to stay off that soapbox. Um, but a lot of people don't realize, and honestly, I didn't realize, I, I knew about the US code, I didn't realize this difference until I started researching for my manual, because you go on the ADA website about service dogs and they don't quote the laws. Um, but just for example, the Americans with Disabilities Act, um, I think I've got the citation, I've got my manual over here on my iPad. So um, it's 42 US code 1281 to 12181, sorry, to 12189. Um, it may encompass a little bit more than that. Um, and then there may also be other sections. That's one of the citations I have. Um, I have others as well. Yeah, public services. And so there's parts of the US code. But the thing is, what happens is you take the US code and the what defines things, what sets the regulations and most of the rules is called the Code of Federal Regulations, CFR. Now, this is not passed through Congress. It's done with administrative, administrative agencies, but it holds the same uh, standard as federal law. That's It's considered federal law. She's definitely one of those know-it-all pieces of shit. I keep saying it, but yeah, she's definitely the one in the class who has to explain to you how it's actually done, you know? Well, actually, yeah, ma'am, please shut the fuck up and go away. She's one of those. She's really one of those. And it's crazy that it's like you're doing all this shit in your life. You're you're trying to be this. You're trying to be that. Why not just feed your child? Why even that have that as a liability? Say you completely hate him to, to your very core. Why not just not do that, though? You know, because then you might go to jail. You ever thought about that? It's like that never really, those two, those two things never really connected for her in her brain, which is odd. That's where your definitions for service animals are, most of them. Um, you know, the guidelines. One good example that we see, you know, especially service animal handlers see way too often. Um, one thing you hear in public access is, well, this is private property, so I can do what I want. I can kick the service dog team out. The thing is, first of all, just based on that reasoning, if it was private property and you didn't have to follow the ADA, um, then you, didn't, you wouldn't have to have handicap spaces and wheelchair ramps for access. Yeah. That's, that's the... Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. Yeah. Checkmate. 
circled, dotted. Like, what the fuck are you? Oh, my God. I hate people like this so much. She's a Karen. This is a Karen, folks. This is pre- murderous rage karen right here this is how this is how she behaves this is how they this is how they act right here just just the little small gestures the like look like, like the little hand gesture like get this in your brain okay understand this okay because i completely understand this you need to understand this now like shit's kind of sh shit kind of irks me every time i hear her speak the end of the soapbox for now but um for that as far as public property question goes in the Code of Federal Regulations, it actually defines public entity, private entity, but then it goes, okay, here's public accommodations. And guess what? Private entity, anything that's not a public entity, so pretty much anything not owned by the government. Um, and it says, yeah, these are all public accommodations and it lists a bunch, but yes, you are considered public accommodation under the Americans with Disabilities Act and the corresponding Code of Federal Regulation. Now- And I don't um, have anything, I don't have anything against service dogs. I just don't like the people who make statements with their with their service animals. It's like, okay, you have your service animal. Go, go along. Go, go. But it's like, please don't look at my dog. Please don't. I understand. Don't pet the dog. The, the dog is working. But some people make it a big thing. They'll go into a place that they know they don't want the service animal. They'll do it anyway. And it's like, okay, I get you have your rights and whatever. But you can clearly see that some people just do that shit to kind of get a rise out of people. Kind of like attention-seeking not everybody, but people definitely do it. I've seen it happen. I used to work at Target. Like, people would just attention seek. And it's kind of like, bro, go do something with your day. Okay? Like, shit. Take you and your service animal. Take him to a park. Let him go run. How about that? Like, like go do something. Okay. I'm still deciding which order. <laughs> um, one thing about the ADA, the CFR, um, because it's federal law, it applies to all U.S. states, most, I'd have to look at the territory, you know, that's not the type of law you generally study, do a lot of broad stuff in law school. Um, Ma'am, we don't give a fuck about your law school. This channel's supposed to be about your dog. I don't know. She's, oh, she just, it's something about her. Just the grinding of the gears, bro. I could, I could feel it. But it does apply to the states. Well, here's the thing, as far as something like the Americans with Disabilities Act and the corresponding regulations, a state cannot take away from that. And in this case, it, you kind of have to flip it for the ADA, but a state could not add more restrictions that the, than the ADA allows. One example, the ADA says if uh, the handler, service animal handler, does not have an obvious disability, a public accommodation may ask two questions. A state could not turn around and pass, okay, have they done it? Yes. Is it legal? No. Would it stand up if somebody challenged it? No. <laughs> but a state can't say, well, you know, I can ask more questions. I can make you demonstrate the task. They can't add to that. They cannot make it more restrictive. They can't add more requirements. Now, that being said, states may add more protections. And one of the areas this is... If you pay attention, there's some baby sounds in the background. It might be little man, as she calls them, or G, which they fucked up many times. But there is a baby in the background. It's extremely common with ADA and service animals is with service animals and training. The ADA and its regulations don't mention service animals and training. And I wish, I mean, they could update the regulations and not have to update the actual ADA, the, the U.S. code. But I really, this needs to be standard because as of a little over a year ago, oh, I need to look sometime soon, but you know, y'all know with my schedule, it's kind of crazy. Um, but as of a little over a year ago, there was still, it was less than five. So it was less than a handful, but there were still at least a couple states that don't allow, that don't grant public access to service animals and training at all. If a place, you know, business wants to kick out a service animal training, they can. Um, there's some states that only allow service animal and training public access if it's with a recognized organization. So owner trainer, handler trainer. Oh, and like I me see why this kind of stems up her alley because she's a service animal trainer. So, you know, organizations, they don't want her, her dog pissing and shitting all over the organization and she's mad about it. Pretty much, you know, well, why don't you take your service animal in training to a training field or something? You know, it's not that hard. <laughs> nah, you want to take her to Target, though. You want to take her to, to the, to the what you call it? The market. What you call it? What do you call it? The farmer's market. You want to take them there. That trains others, but it's, you know, not a big org or anything like that. That would be a problem. And then you've got states that 
look, service animal and training is considered the same thing as a service animal. Now the behavior requirements then become the same. Um, but so that's just one example of where state law can't, um, can't add more restrictions, but it can protect more. Um, the main focus of this video is one other area that people don't realize. Um, and I understand that people don't realize this one thing, and this is true probably with any area of law. Um, but it's definitely true with the ADA and with the, the service animal stuff. People will hear something, they'll pick up on something and you know, it's easy to research, but they don't necessarily do the research now, or it's been said over and over again on different websites. So they just take it as true. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that is very commonly said is, oh, it's a crime to uh, portray a an animal as a service animal. It's not. Um, it's a crime to deny access. Here's the thing. The Americans with Disabilities Act and the regulations that go with it, this is a civil law. It is not a criminal law. If someone so violates the ADA, they can only sue you. especially regarding the service animal provisions, um, they can't be charged with the crime. Now, you can call it in. I've, I've heard people say, well, I'm going to um, uh, file a complaint, an ADA complaint against you, or no, file a complaint with the ADA is what I hear. It's actually you file a compl an ADA complaint with the Department of Justice. Um, but you, you hear that. You can do that. It can result in a fine for the business. You can also sue for discrimination. Yeah, you could sue, but you can't do anything other than that. And, you know, in most cases, if you're legit, you'll, you'll win pretty easily. But it's not a crime. Nobody can be charged with a crime under the Americans with Disabilities Act and its regulations. Um, and this is, this is the main focus of, of why I want to do this video. I keep hearing, um, you know, oh, you could go to jail for this and that and the other. Not you know what you can go to jail for? You could go to jail for refusing to feed your child. I, th I think I think you could go to jail for that one. I'm not too sure about the ADA situation. Uh, clearly, you've done your research. I'm glad she's done her research that the ADA doesn't have any, you know, jail-worthy offenses. But um, I'm pretty sure you could go to jail for starving kids. You guys let me, in, you guys let me know in the comments. I'm not sure. I, I have a feeling, though. Uh, she, she should have researched that. Like, hit Google and be like, can I go to jail for starving my son? Hmm, my autistic son. No, no, no. My autistic moving impaired son. Yeah, I think you could, I think you could go to jail for that. I think so. She should have looked that up. Not under the ADA, no, you can't. Not under federal law. I've heard it's a federal felony. And I've heard that many places. It's common misconception. It is not. It is not a federal crime at all. Actually, there are some obviously federal crimes, but most of your criminal law is based on state law that's handed to the states. Um, there's some obviously some big stuff and crossing state lines becomes an issue federally, but most of that is state law. In the case of the ADA, sorry if there's any background noise. Um, I See, sorry if there's any background noise. It's probably, t listen, teach my there's a ring on her finger. I don't know if she kept the ring on her finger after her husband's stroke or whatever, but this very well could be the time where Timothy and Paul and G were in the same house with Shonda, with her ugly ass Mickey Mouse headband, with that, with that forehead. She's just not attractive. Whoever said somebody was in my comments, I think they were trolling. They're like, nah, Shonda's actually pretty attractive. She got a bunch of different men. Listen, guys will fuck anything, okay? So that doesn't count, okay? It, it, it doesn't count. Got, most dudes will just, will just, you know, vagina. Cool. You know, so don't, no, she's not attractive. It's, she's not attractive at all. She's actually quite scary looking. My little guy in a minute. I homeschool in case anybody is watching this and didn't know that. Um, and I oh, homeschool uh, guy in a minute. homeschool, huh? You're such a good mom, huh? You're such a nurturing parent. <laughs> crossing state lines becomes an issue federally, but most of that is state law. In the case of the ADA, sorry if there's any background noise. Um, I gotta go teach my little guy in a minute. I homeschooled in case anybody is watching this and didn't know that. Um, and I homeschooled before the pandemic, but uh, anyway, try to get as much as I can done here. But um, you're so ugly. No, that's crazy. She's, she's, she's like, she's prancing around that she's a homeschooler and she's so, and you notice her eyes get so wide when she's when she's trying to like be be excited about something her eyes get wide that shit is scary that shit is creepy like what who's hitting who's hitting that i don't know i somebody who is down bad somebody who is down bad is hitting that because holy shit so if you violate the idiot it's not a crime lawsuit 
get a fine. The fines can get significant, especially if somebody's reoffending. But it is not a crime. It is not a federal misdemeanor. It's not a federal felony to portray an animal as a service animal if it's not. To deny access to a service animal, it's not. And there's probably some debate about, oh, maybe it should be. Mm, you know, I'd rather the states deal with this instead of the federal government as far as actual criminal stuff on this. Um, but that's just my personal preference. Um, however, that being said, there are states like mine where there has, because again, the states can offer more protection. And one of the more protections is to make denying access to a service animal a crime. To, in this, my particular state, denying access is a crime, um, impeding a service animal, being able to task is a crime, injuring a service animal is a crime. And then it is also a crime to portray an animal as a service animal or service animal in training if it's not. Now, bear in mind, I, again, I'd have to look. I don't remember any states that I've found where even, you know, that... Look at those eyebrows, that, the, the arch in those eyebrows. So sexy, right? That's the sexiest shit you've ever seen. Sexiest lady out there. Take that ring off your finger. That shit, mm, mm, mm. Is a crime in a state. It's a felony. Um, everywhere I've looked, I think it's a misdemeanor. Example here, the misdemeanor, it would be up to a $500 fine, up to 90 days in jail. Now, with my externship working for a judge this semester, I can... After the thing, you know, because she handles criminal and civil. And so the, the things I've already seen, seen a lot of criminal hearings on all sorts of stuff, plea and sentencing. And I'm going to tell you right now for a misdemeanor, you're not likely to get jail time. Now, I will say with the judge I happen to work for, you might because I'm training a service dog for her husband. That's how we met and then kind of fell into, oh, wait a minute, you're a judge. Oh, wait, do you need to? Somebody for I have to do an extra. You notice how she kind of like you notice how she kind of just um brags about things. Oh, I'm in law school. Yeah, you know, you know I have service dogs. I train, and oh, I met the judge. You know, we just we just linked up because you know I'm so cool and I'm just so influential. I train her husband's dog. Yep, influential as fuck, right? Yep, Shonda, the, like nobody cares. It's just crazy how she's trying to flex that she's training the judge's dog. We don't give a fuck, Shonda. Shonda, Shonda. And her face is all red and shit. What's all that about? You notice the bottom part of her cheeks? Her, I, that's why I keep looking at it. It looks like she's wearing a fucking mask. Like she's wearing white and then red. I don't know what happened there. And she got the Mickey Mouse headband. This shit is atrocious. I know I keep the do-rag on all the time. That shit, y'all might say that's atrocious, but damn. That's even worse. Like at least I don't have graphics on it. She got Mickey Mouse on her forehead. What type of shit is that? Been kind of happened um but again i wouldn't want somebody's bias now i would be stricter with something like this but that's just me personally again that's probably some bias um but that is those are the possible penalties in this state so when people out there youtubers handlers other people say oh it's a federal crime it's not it's not a federal felony i don't know anywhere it might be if it is comment please tell me if it is a felony in your state haven't found that. If it is, please comment. Engage with me. My channel does no numbers. Engage. Engage. Please comment. Ma'am, shit. If you look at her comments right now, nothing but nothing but Timothy. R.I.P. Timothy. And good for her. And I hope I hope somebody somebody in my comments was saying, like, hurry, do a video on it before they delete the video. Listen, Shonda's lawyer is not deleting this video. You know why? He doesn't care. And he thinks she deserves to be in prison. He's probably watching all the coverage that all the YouTubers do. He probably watched the little AG tactical video. He probably didn't subscribe because he doesn't watch, you know, YouTube like that, you know, but he probably saw it, you know, come on now. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody's fighting for her. I haven't looked in a while. Um, most states that do make it a crime, it's a misdemeanor. And, you know, some states will say, okay, denying access is a crime, but nothing else or denying access and injuring a service animal is a crime, but nothing else. My state happens to offer quite a bit of protection. And yes, I live here. I love it. I love having family close. Um, but y'all know I'm from the South and, and you know, I miss being down there, especially with two feet of snow on the ground right now. That's stacked up over a few weeks, but you know. And it's cold right now. It could be the time that Timothy was being, you know, dealt with prison camp style, concentration camp style. I don't like cold. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the focus of this. Look, it is not it is not a federal crime. People cannot go to jail for, and in even in some states that protect as far as you can't deny access or it's a crime. They don't always they don't always have uh, portraying an animal as a service animal and it's not as a crime. 
or a service animal in training when it's not. It's a crime. So please bear that in mind. I would, you know, I'd really like to make sure we get accurate information out there. Um, I, again, please advocate. And you know, even if you're not a service animal team, if you're not a service animal handler, a lot of people, especially, you know, there's a lot of service animal handlers out there that because of their disability or for one reason or another, can't advocate the way someone like me can, not just because of knowledge, but I'm, I'm going to stand up and, you know, if somebody tries to do something, I've shared a story at a, I don't remember if I mentioned the restaurant's name, so I'll just say fast food restaurant, um, where I had to actually threaten to call the police because uh, they were trying to deny access. See, see, she's one of those Karens. She is a Karen with a K. She's a Karen with a K. And shout out to all my Karens out there who aren't Karens, you know. Um, she, she, she called the police because they denied her access because she couldn't take her fucking lion into the damn dining area come on now she had great danes my uncle has a great dane bro the dog is just ridiculously large she, the dog is obnoxiously large okay it's not it's just it's just big he's he's big for no damn reason and you're gonna argue with them that it's a service dog a service dog in training that is and they don't want to access the dog oh but you're gonna call the police on them i love it i bet you the police literally told her to go home or I bet you the police said go inside and we'll just watch the dog because they don't really want you with the dog inside. Like, come on now. And I love dogs, but I am not on her side. I love dogs and I'm not on her side at all. She's one of them people. She'll take a dog and use it as an attention seeking, like an attention seeking thing. Like, oh, I have a service animal. Oh, you have to let me in. Did you know? Did you know that you had to let me in? Yeah, I could go in there right now with him because he's a service dog in training. And and the law would also state that, yeah, she's one of those people. But I, I would encourage you, if you see something going on, please, please step in and say something. Uh, you know, the more people we have advocating, the, the better off we're going to be as far as as the fakes not getting away with it, but also the, the actual legitimate teams being protected and not being given grief. And I figured I'll finish this with a little bit of a story time. Um, sort of kind of good, bad example of fucking story time. Let's hear the Karen experience. What? Nah, I'll just go into it and I'll let y'all decide. Good, bad example. Um, this was gosh. Well, it was a couple years ago because it was before I got Gemini. I had Aslan, my lab, my first service dog. And um, we were south of where we are now, um, but still over here fairly near the lake shore. And uh, I was at a store, not a huge store, but, and I, there's part of me that wants to give you the name because I have seen a couple of recent videos where apparently this store, like employees have said, we're not supposed to say anything. Mm, you don't, yeah, say, and I understand people are so stressed about getting sued. I get that. But the thing is that it seems like the people that are the most vocal, Okay, I'll say it most obnoxiously vocal. Not always, but a lot of times are the ones that aren't legit. And so not being willing to say something, you're hurting. And especially if you're not willing to say something, the stores aren't, then it affects those of us, the, the legitimate teams. You could injure, you endanger this public. You can endanger us, our animals. Yeah. So. She goes into a fucking ramble about nothing before she starts her story. She always has to give like, an excuse for her story before she starts it. It's the most annoying thing. It's the most annoying trait ever, bro. And she, ugh, anyways, continue. Apparently, like I said, I've seen recent videos where this, this store. All of that just to say she's scared as fuck to mention the store. Just, just call them out or don't. But we don't want to hear your whole background conflict between the reasons why you can and can't say it. Just start the story. Shonda, ladies and gentlemen, Shonda is not as willing to say something um but this was a couple years ago and eh, system manager really wasn't much help then either but um i was in the store now bear in mind y'all know i gemini goes everywhere with me aslan did too there are extremely rare occasions where if i know i'm going to be in a place less than five minutes every once in a while and it happened to be the case this day because there's snow on the ground and because i had parked in the garage i had not put aslan's boots on him and there was salt in the parking lot. And I just, I was like, eh, I don't feel like putting those on. You know, it's easy to do, but I just didn't feel like dealing with it. I knew I was going to run in and run out. So I get in this store and I get to the back of the store and I see a lady with a dog and a service dog vest and it is in the cart and it is whining 
it was not barking at this point, but it was whining and, and kind of fidgety in the cart. And there are some rare situations um, where you could basically carry a service animal if they're, they can alert that way. Most of the time, they should not be in a grocery cart. Um, oh, so you took your, your kind time to go ahead and Karen her. I told you this was going to be a Karen story. I told you. But again, I'll try to stay off that soapbox too. Um, so, but I saw it. And of course, I'm not afraid to say something. And so I, uh, I approached the woman and, and I tried to be really, I approached the woman. I'm not afraid to say something. I tried to be really all red flags. See, these are signs, bro. These are literal signs of the type of person she is. She's a control freak. She needs to win. Even if nobody's even bothering her, she still needs to win that situation. Even though it's not even a win lose situation, she needs to win. She said that she wasn't going to let Timothy beat her. That's how she views life, bro. She not that's how she views life. That's how that's how it looks like, you know? Gonna go and approach somebody. Man, if I wish Shonda approached me. I would have been like, ma'am, respectfully get the fuck away from me. If you got an issue with it, go kick rocks outside. I ain't got no go the fuck away. Security. She is harassing me. Like, come on now. Really nice about it. And so I, I said, um, ma'am, you're is that a service animal who's not supposed to be in a grocery cart generally? And her first, I mean, she just got hostile from the get-go. She turned to me. Yeah, because fuck off. Thank you. Are you challenging me? Apparently, I found out later she thought I was an employee. I wasn't, not sure why she thought that, but I kind of, no ma'am, but I am asking because I'm extremely aware of the, the laws regarding service animals. And she said, well, if you're challenging me, you can get sued and did it. I said, no, actually, and... It was literally. Oh, shit. Karen meets another Karen. One Karen says you can't do that. The other Karen says I could sue you for challenging me. What? You, these ladies need to go and fucking find a hobby, bro. Find a new hobby. Shonda's already too, too cling, clung on to her hobby. Go, Shonda, find a new one. Go play golf or something. You never see women playing golf. Go play golf. Do something different maybe two words into her second sentence. When she asked, are you challenging me? The dog didn't do anything other than whine. The minute she started talking again, this dog starts barking and it's a toy breed and it starts barking. And so she's rambling and I'm like, all due respect, that's not okay. You have to be able to, if the dog is disruptive, you have to be able to bring it under control. Well, you're the one upsetting it, so it's your fault. No, the, the service dog should not react this way. Um, and you should be able to bring it under control. And she was fussing at him, was, he just kept barking. Um, and so she was so loud that an assistant manager who was the manager on duty came over and was, was asking us what was going on. And she starts ranting and raving and griping. And then she storms off. And so I explained to the, as she rightfully should have Fuck that random stupid ass lady who tried to throw off my mojo for today. The fuck, fuck out of my face. Like that is crazy. The assistant manager, here's the deal. Not a service dog. You can kick this out. This is a danger to both the public and other service animal teams. Um, and the manager was, the assistant manager was not. She was trying to get her kicked out. Now, if the assistant manager listens to her, he's not a G. If he, if she said the manager just kind of ignored me, the manager's a G. Fuck this lady. Overly willing to take any action, unfortunately. Good. Um, but Good. Like, he's a G. Fuck this lady. Oh, they, you, listen, I used to work at Target. You deal with people like this every damn day. Please go somewhere else. We do not want your business. You know, I'll pass on that information. Okay, fine. So I went to the register checkout and she was coming, this lady is coming back through the front of the store and she starts just jawing at me again. And again, she's yelling across the store, you know? I only spoke loud enough for her to hear me, um, but she just went on and I'm like, look, you know, I we can sit here and argue. I, I know what the laws are. And she's one, one of her comments was, well, I have papers on him, so he's certified. Nobody and cares what the laws are. Do you know that the police don't even give a f about the laws on service animals nobody cares you'll have to literally take it to a court and the judge don't even care the judge does not care i promise you the only reason they give a fuck is because somebody wrote it down and they have to uphold it dog crimes what nobody cares she's not abusing the dog she's not beating the dog the dog is in the cart fuck off respectfully <laughs> And I said, yeah, that's not legit. That's fake. There's no actual certification. Um, ex I will accept there's a few large orgs that have their own certification. I know one that has uh, 
that is big here in this state where basically their certification when they, they do their, their own vests. And that's a very big deal to, to earn their own vest. Um, but as far as actual national certification, national register, no, those are all fake. Um, because a national doesn't exist. It would be really hard to do that. First of all, it would make it cost prohibitive because you start trying to do a registration and it just, the, the cost of regulating that makes it difficult. And then you, that's going to be hard for owner handlers and smaller groups. Um, plus trying to certify or reg, I mean, because of the variety of service animals, it would be hard to do. Um, but it doesn't exist. The only ones that do are fake. Most of y'all watching this probably know that already. Um, but she was yapping about that and, and I said, okay, that's fake. She was like, oh, really? you want me to show it to you? I said, sure. She basically gave us a story a story time about her taking the L, her being humiliated in the store. That's pretty much what she did. Congrats. Congrats, man. Like, good for you. Your your YouTube video of 500 views told us about, told us about you getting punked out in a store. Okay. Go ahead, and I'll show you where the law says that's not. First of all, you don't need it. And second of all, yeah, no. Um. And so she was getting so loud, the assistant manager actually called the police. And, I, you know, I was like, all right, fine. You know, she's, this is obviously not legit. I'm good with that. Um, I had, by the time she got on the phone with the police, and it was because the area we're in, they called the county, the deputy sheriff ended up, or the deputy sheriff ended up showing up. But I went ahead, checked out. I went and said, I'll be right back. Went out to my car, got Aslan and brought him in. Lady's still in there at this point. Aslan's laying at my feet. This little dog is just, Oh, he was, it was like funny, funny a little bit. There's a couple, and you know, the dogs make different noises. There's a couple of weird noises this dog made where Aslan from his head on the floor actually kind of picked his head up and kind of looked at him and then looked up at me and I, I didn't have to say leave it. I just shook my head and he puts his head back down like, ah. and one. She went and got her dog. She's, she's, in, she's one of those people, bro. She went and got her dog to taunt the lady. So now she, at this point, she's waiting for the police. She really has nothing to do with her day. And again, this is what I'm saying. These are the signs that kind of show the type of person she is and the type of things she'll be willing to do. She's petty as fuck. She'll wait there for the police. No matter of fact, she'll go get her dog. That's bigger. I guess that's a show of force or something. I don't know. And she's just going to let... She's going to wait for the police so she can have some more conflict. Sure. This lady is a piece of work. Once he huffed, he did. He was just like... Ah. So I have no idea what the dog was saying to him, but it was kind of amusing the way he reacted a little bit. Um, but the the manager had informed this other lady she called the police. Well, she left before they showed up. Good. She did stay in the shopping center, um, and I think they did get a chance to talk to her. But she she bailed. Um, she didn't. She she was grumping about all of a sudden I had brought my service animal in and I was just showing off because Aslan's laying there, just laying there. This dog is barking at him. He's just like whatever. Um, and uh, so. This was her biggest win to her. In her head, she's like, "Oh my god, this I am so, I am that bitch, okay? Like I I told her off. Yep. I showed her my dog who was so obedient. Yes, wins. That was a win. She was probably riding that high for a whole month before she started torturing Timothy. That was that was the other high she was riding. She was like, "Yeah. I showed her. Remember that girl in that store 4 months ago? I showed her. Remember that? You remember that, right? I showed her." Hard part, the deputy sheriff shows up and comes in, you know, talk to the manager and then comes up and talk to me. And I told him, you know, been training. This is mine. You know, here's the deal. I knew. Here's the deal. I was not as familiar as I am now with the, the state laws, but obviously I knew the federal law. And so we're talking and this part of what upset me, I did know, I knew roughly about as far as some of the, the criminal, um, that it was a crime in the state for some, certain things. And this deputy sheriff flat out told me, you know, I know you hear if you see something, say something. He said that doesn't always apply. And I was like, Excuse thank you. What did I tell you guys? What did I tell you guys? The police officers don't give a fuck. The judge don't give a fuck. The magistrate don't give. A Nobody cares. Your mama don't care. Your auntie don't care. No, we, we don't care. Okay. Your little dog laws. We don't give a fuck. The only, the only time is something will happen is if you take it to the court and you make it an issue and we have to just follow the law. Other than that, we don't care. <laughs> he told her, if you see something, say something, that doesn't always, that, that always, that doesn't always count.
Thank you, Mr. Officer. Now go protect the people who are getting shot and stabbed and leave this stupid ass lady in the store. Excuse me. They're breaking the law. That's not okay. Especially not the danger they're putting other people in. Oh, and he's like, well, nobody would ever prosecute it. It's like, are you kidding me? He's like, nobody would ever. <laughs> I didn't watch this video ahead of time. This is, that is exactly what I said. Nobody, it wouldn't even make it to the judge. And of course he tried to, he said, and this was right before, I want to say it was right before I started law school. But again, I was familiar with federal stuff, somewhat familiar with state enough that I could have this conversation with him. <laughs> and um, I said, and he said, well, you know, nobody's going to really prove it. And I said, wait a minute, the whole, I've got the, the registration papers that that's, that's fraudulent, period, end of story. It's like, well, nobody would ever, no prosecutor would ever do anything. Mm, I would be, uh, I'd be pushing hard, but that's just me. Um, but I, after it was obvious, he was just, he was like, just leave it alone. Don't say anything. Da, 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 da. All right. You know what? Whatever. Let him wasted that, wasted that fine officer's damn time. I swear to God. He was so pissed. He was like, ma'am, I, I, I was taking a break and I came here to this. Please leave us alone. Leave. And I actually, when I got home, I called both his sergeant and his lieutenant, both of which said, uh, no, if you see, please say something. You know, again, they agreed this could be a danger. She called to the sergeant and the lieutenant. Then when he got back to the office, they, they called him into the office and they're like, hey, did you know some random lady about dogs called about you? And they laughed their asses off and had a good coffee together. The fuck? There's... Um, the dog was growling and doing all sorts of stuff in that cart. Had it been down where it could actually do something to somebody, that's a problem. Um, and so they were not happy. Um, bear in mind, too, most, even in a state where it's the law, you know, police officers don't memorize the laws. They don't. They can look them up, but there's very few laws they memorize. So you being familiar with it, um, if you're going to advocate for them, that's important. They said, look, you know. Whether they know it, they could look it up. You can tell them, hey, this is in there, and they can look it up really easily nowadays. But the lieutenant sergeant were like, no, please say something. We will talk to this deputy. Please say something. Oh, they spoke to him, and they were laughing their asses off. There was tears coming out their eyes. They're like, yep, another day. She actually called the department and asked about you. She, had, Yeah, the Sh her name was Shonda, ugly-ass lady. She had, a Mickey Mouse, she had a Mickey Mouse headband. Ugly-ass lady. Yeah, you remember her from Tuesday? Yep. She called on you. She was snitching, <laughs> right? Um, and I, I did end up talking to the store manager a couple days later. I had gone back in just to, because I knew she was there. Um, and she, we talked about, because I have, um, before we moved up here, I had had several employee meetings with several businesses where I said, look, here's your, your federal laws. And at the time, the state I lived in, here's your state laws. Here's how to handle this situation. You know, here's what's okay, what's not. Um, and bear in mind, Every time I did that, it was as a trainer, service animal trainer, or service dog trainer, because I've never trained one of the miniature horses. Um, but I'm not giving legal advice. I should have said that to begin with. I'm not. This is not. Don't take it that way. Um, but as a trainer, look, here's best ways to handle this, and here's what applies as a as a service animal team. Um, and I offered, and the manager got all excited about it, and never, never got a call back. That's happened many times before. Yeah, that's um, happened many the rejection, right? That's happened many times before. Yeah, it's because the manager didn't give a fuck. They smiled in your face and walked away and said that crazy lady came back again. I don't understand why she's telling this story as if this is something that she should put public. This is embarrassing. This should not be public. Delete this. But I had been back in that store. Um, never ran into that particular person again that the lady with the dog, but, um, ran into a couple other, there was one that was very, I mean, well-trained service dog. Um, and then there was one that was, Neh. um, and the one that was me started growling at Aslan and the manager said, uh, the manager actually asked that person, are you about to check out? And they said, yes, then you need to do that and go because you can't, the, the dog can't act, react that way to the other service dog. Um, but yeah, so this is long video. Make sure it's, you're given accurate information, please. I don't want to stop people from advocating at all, but we need to make sure we're doing it accurately. Um, we don't want to give information that's not true. That's not accurate. Um, so for those out there, I mean, like I said, the person I've seen make several videos recently and, and said, oh, they should, you know, this person could, could go to jail. Eh, not She's so, she throws so much shade. It's disgusting. I'm going to end it right there because this lady is so annoying.
but yeah, that's 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 just a little. Um, I keep looking at that camera. Let me look at this camera. Um, that's just a little. That's just a little sneak peek into the mind of Sean Lavender Ark. A complete Karen, like next level Karenation happening right here. It's wild. But until the next one, people, I love you guys, man. It's 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 been great. We're gonna go live again with some more Paul calls. Um probably tomorrow so keep an eye out for that it's going to be in the evening instead and um yeah until then everybody stay inside stay safe i love you guys you guys are fuck man you guys are awesome bro next level you guys got me to 20k you guys got me cutting down work work time i'm about to be doing this shit full time and um it's gonna be great people i love you guys i'm out of here peace <laughs>